Hello everybody, I am Keaton, and this is Kid Catholic Season 8, Episode 21. Now, really quickly, before we get into it, I know I said this these past couple weeks, but it is actually, like, really important. If you all could please do me the biggest favor in the world. It's super easy, super quick, super free. And, like, not just free, but super free. If you want to go to kidcatholic.com and then click the join uh, our email list button and then just enter your first name, last name, and your email. That way, I still have a way to send videos to you guys if YouTube ever crashes or bans religious content. Um, that way, I still have a way to, to reach you guys and send videos to you guys. And it's easy, and your email will be uh, kept private and never shown to anybody. So I'd really appreciate it if you would go... Um, and do that. Also, while you're at it, if you feel like hitting the red subscribe button, if you haven't already, that'd be greatly appreciated as well. Anyway, so what I want to talk about for today is, as right now today, uh, Tuesday, July 28th, it is Blessed Stanley Rother's feast day uh, in Oklahoma. And so Blessed Stanley Rother is a very special um, person to specifically the state of Oklahoma because he was from here. Now, more about Blessed St. Lee Rother's life will be in the St. of the Week, but I want to sort of take some of his morals and sort of uh, uh, what he learned and what he went through and apply it to mainly what I want to talk about today, and that is the idea of sainthood and how we are all called to be a saint, but not just that, how we really, really need us to step up and be the saints that we are called to be in today's world. So, let's get into it. So, s saints are something kind of a lot of people get confused when it comes to saints who are named a saint by the Catholic Church on earth. They could have a relative or a loved one who they know passed away, and it's, oh, well, the Catholic Church didn't name them a saint, so are they really in heaven? Things like that. So I just want to clear that up, first of all. First off, a saint is anybody who is in heaven. Anybody who is in heaven is a saint. That's the definition of what a saint is. Um, and so even if they are not technically named a saint by the Catholic Church on earth, that doesn't mean that they're not in heaven. It just means that the Catholic Church has no way of proving or knowing for a fact that they are in heaven. And it's not just like right after they die, they can automatically be named a saint by the Catholic Church on earth, right? It takes a lot of like the beatification and the canonization process. But this does not mean that because they're not named a saint by the Catholic Church on earth, that they are an angel until they are, right? A common misconception or something is when, when someone passes away, they say, I haven't gained an angel today. Uh, cute saying on the surface, but that's not true. It, you don't change beings after you die, right? You don't become an angel once you go into heaven. There's a difference between angels and beings, and angels are already in heaven, right? They're completely separate beings from human beings that we are. So it's not like you turn into an angel. However, if you go to heaven, then what you do become is a saint right away is that we are all called to be those saints. Whether it means that we end up being named a saint by the Catholic Church here on earth or not, we are all called to end up in heaven. And we know this. And something that we as, as Christians, we as Catholics, tend to say a lot is, oh, it's, it's, it's the Catholic Church's Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Or it's the Christian Church's Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The reality is, it's the whole world's Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Everybody, even if they don't believe it, Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior, and as a result, this doesn't just mean that Christians or just Catholics are, are called to be saints. It doesn't mean that you have to be Catholic to go to heaven, or that, or that you have to be Catholic, um, in order to be, to have that calling. No, everybody on earth. Now, what does this do with wanting or, or, or needing to be a saint today? And I sort of want to talk a little bit what I talked about a couple weeks ago, and that is the slow rise of persecution of Catholics in the U.S. Because we see physical persecution of not only Catholics, but Christians in general, um, across the world. Um, and in the U.S. right now, it's not physical as of right now, right? And that's absolutely amazing, but we may start seeing that slow increase. Right now in other parts of the world, 1 in 11 Christians are, are physically persecuted for their faith. In France, uh, the attack on Catholic churches is rising at 2 per day right now, which is terribly sad. And in the U.S., we're starting to see this rise come over here, right? We see... Um, Jesus statues, uh, calling for the, all Jesus statues to be torn down in California. Um, and very early morning, the city took down the St. Junipero Serra statue in California. And so we're starting to see this sort of anti-Catholic, anti-Christian ideology being swept into the U.S. And this is when saints are needed the most. So I want to look at an example, uh, the example of Poland. After World War II, Poland was severely persecuted when it came to their Catholic churches. Church land was seized. Literally, the government came in and took control of churches and said, no, you can't worship here. Um, and this was immediately following World War II, and as a result, a very small amount of Poland was Catholic. Then you had missionaries come in there, and now almost 90% of Poland are Catholic. Why? Because people stepped up. People stepped up and started defending and going against the government and standing up for the Catholic Church, right? 
And this is what we need. We need to stand up for our church. This doesn't mean by going up to someone and giving them a homily, right? But it means by our action. It means by our words. It means by what we do. We need to step up and be the saint that we are called to be. Because honestly, when you look back on the 2000 year Christian, on the 2000 year history of the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church has never had just a long period of time where they haven't been persecuted. Right? That's never happened. The Catholic Church has always been persecuted and always been attacked because nobody said being Catholic was going to be easy. Right? It's going to be difficult. Okay? But how has the Catholic Church survived all this? Through prayer. Through the people in it stepping up and saying, hey, I'm going to be a saint. I'm going to be the saint that I'm called to be. Right? And I'm going to step up and act like the saint and look on the saints before me. So that when I die, I can get into heaven and actually be a saint. Right? Because that's who the saints are. They are the people in heaven. They are the people who stood up and defended their Catholic faith, even when it, even when it resulted in death. And so, yeah, it's going to be scary. I mean, right now, teachers in, in the public school system can get fired for mentioning the name Jesus in their classroom. We saw it happen in Ohio, right? This, this is happening across our country. And so, yeah, it's going to be scary, just like how it was scary for those saints. But we're not being physically persecuted right now. We can't let it get to that. We can't let it go that far. Like some of the other saints were physically persecuted for their faith, even to the point of physical persecution. We can agree. A lot of the martyrs of past went through way more than we're going through right now in America, and they still stood up for their Catholic faith. So where are we, right? Where are we? Why are we letting the government shut down our churches, right? In California, you still can't go to church. You still can't go to Mass. Where I live, luckily, we are now able to go to Mass, right? It's just, it's really sad to see. And that's why we need to step up and that's why we need to be those saints that we are called to be. And it's not going to be easy. But what's going to make it easier is if we pray and if we have Jesus right by our side, right? To answer that call to sainthood. Because yeah, we all have different vocations, whether it's the religious life, uh, the married life, whether, whether what our career path is, right? We all have different callings in life. But all of us share one calling. And that is to be a saint. And that is the ultimate calling that is always around us and that we should always be listening to and hearing and going after, right? Going the path that Jesus wants us to take and that is the path of sainthood and we need to start walking that. We need to do it now and we need to do it now and we need to stand up for our Catholic faith in the United States of America right now, right? Even across the world because like I said, physical persecution isn't happening in the U.S. right now, but churches are being vandalized and and statues are being torn down not only in the U.S. but worldwide. And physical persecution is happening in other parts of the world. And so it's time to stand up. It's time to be those saints. Because again, I know I've said it. I'm going to say it again because it's super important. How has the Catholic Church survived this? Obviously through prayer. Obviously through the people who had God right by their side. A.K.A. the saints. The people who trusted God. And who stood up and who wouldn't let the church be persecuted. The saints. And that is who we need to mimic after. Because we are all called to be like them. Right? Obviously, I'm going to talk a little bit more about Blessed Sailing Road through when I get into the same of the week, but um, this idea of sort of going against society and and, and it, metaphorically swimming into danger, right? Blessed Stanley Road through exemplifies that perfectly. Um, when he was here in Oklahoma and there was physical persecution going on in Guatemala, uh, he did not run away, right? He was People said, hey, stay here. If you go over there, you will die. And he goes, a shepherd does not run right? This is a famous quote, a shepherd does not run. He wouldn't leave his people. He went back into the face of danger, even though he knew that it might mean his death, and ultimately it, d- it did, right? Blessed Stanley Rother met his death that way because he wouldn't run away, because he wasn't afraid, because he went right into it to defend his faith, and that's so important. Something we can all take from, we can all mimic, and, and we can look at Blessed Stanley Rother's exe- example, and we can put it in, in our own lives, right? Well, since it's Blessed Stanley Rother's feast day, I thought, in, in Oklahoma, right, this is a perfect time to talk about this and to address this, because it's a very current issue, right? Especially in 2020, we're seeing this rise of this, this anti-Christian, anti-Catholic sort, sort of rise culture swimming into our world, right? And it's affecting young people. Too, and so we need to step up. We need to be the individual saints that we are called to be. Obviously, all together, right? And and right now, it can kind of sound scary. Like, you're asking me to just step up and be a, a Saint Therese of Lisieux, a, a Saint Peter, all these big saints, right? I'm supposed to act like them just all of a sudden overnight and defy everyone in society. Like, that is extraordinarily difficult, right? That's why we need God by our side. 
Jesus, when he was here on earth, he couldn't carry the cross by himself. He needed Simon. We can't carry our crosses by ourselves. We can't step up by ourselves. We need God and we need each other. And that is so important to remember. So the sooner we start praying, the sooner we start building that relationship with God, the more likely and the, and the easier it becomes. Obviously, it's still going to be hard, but the easier it becomes to defend our Catholic faith, which we should all be proud of. So now that the topic is done, y'all know what it's time for now. It's time for... The Saint of the Week! And today's Saint of the Week is, of course, Blessed Stanley Rother. Um, so I want to get more into his story, more into his life, than just the morals of his life, which I talked about earlier. So Blessed Stanley Rother was born and raised in Oklahoma, in a small town in Oklahoma, and did everything a normal kid from that town uh, would like doing for a kid growing up in a small town. Around high school, he wanted to join the seminary and discern a vocation to the priesthood. He was later accepted into the seminary and finished his studies at Mount St. Mary's Sem Seminary in Maryland. Um, he struggled with Latin a lot, so it was a struggle for him to get through the seminary, but he was able to eventually get through. He served as an associate pastor in Oklahoma for five years, but then he he got permission to be a part of the diocese's uh, mission to go over to Guatemala and preach to some of the native tribes there. And so while he was over there, um, he befriended this one tribe specifically and helped them a lot with their chores, with bringing in crops, because they were very poor um, around that time. And so he would stay by them, offer them confession, and converted a lot of people over there. Unfortunately, at the time, there was a civil war breaking out between the government and the, and the people, and the Catholic Church was sort of caught in between, um, considering their their teaching on educating the people about the Catholic faith. And so uh, thousands of Catholics were killed, and eventually Blessed Stanley Rother's name ended up on a death list. And so for his safety, he was told that he needed to return to Oklahoma, which he did just that. While Blessed Stanley Rother was in Oklahoma, he didn't stay uh, very long. He said a shepherd cannot run, which I talked about earlier, right? He wanted to go back to Guatemala so that he could he could continue his mission and continue to preach to his people over there because truly that's where his heart was, right? He wanted to go back to Guatemala. And so eventually he got permission. He went back over there and within just a few months, uh, he was martyred or killed by three men. Um, and as a result, he was officially recognized as a martyr by the Catholic Church and a blessed, which is absolutely amazing. And his cause for canonization is getting closer to naming him a saint. Um, and so that line, a shepherd cannot run, is well known for Blessed Stanley Rother, and his story is absolutely incredible, and it fits perfectly with what I talked about today, right? The idea that we cannot run, we cannot go along with what society is telling us to do and telling us that, oh, it's just, it's just some, some anti-religion ideology that we, that we have to agree with, right? We cannot go along with this. We have to push back just like Blessed Stanley Rother did, right? Even when Catholics were being physically persecuted in the place where his mission was, he didn't care. He went back because he had a mission, because he had a calling, and he obeyed that calling even if it meant his death, and that is that is exactly what we all need to do, right? In fact, uh, Blessed Stanley Rother's heart was requested to uh, be stored in Guatemala, where it still is today, enshrined in Guatemala. And so his heart truly was there with his people, with his mission, where God was calling him to be, and he obeyed that call. Instead of questioning it, instead of saying, mm, they're being persecuted over there, I'm not sure if I want to go along with that, I'll just sit back and let it happen. No, he went right into the chaos to because he knew that's what he had to do because he had to stick up for the catholic faith and even though we're not being physically persecuted in the u.s today that is something that we can look at and we can take from his example and we can apply it to our own lives and our own society today right and we need to say no no matter how risky it is no matter how terrifying it is we need to stand up and it all starts with building this relationship with god so blessed stanley rother pray for us. So thank you all so much for watching. Before you click off this video, really, really quickly, if you felt like doing me a, a, a pretty easy favor, quite honestly, uh, it's completely free, um, not just free, but super free. If you want to go to kidcatholic.com and click the join our email list button or just go to kid-catholic.com slash email list, um, from there you can put in your first name, last name, email address. Your email address will be stored uh, uh, privately. It won't uh, be shown to anybody. And so the reason for that is if YouTube ever crashes or if YouTube um, ever says, oh, we're not allowing religious content, I want a way to continue the Kid Catholic ministry um, and expand it even more. And so if you could join the email list, that way if that ever happens, I could still continue sending you guys 
video so it would be really appreciated uh also while you're at it you might as well go visit kidcatholic.com there's so many awesome things you can do on there you can go n donate to the kid catholic ministry you can buy your very own kid catholic t-shirt you can contact me read about me there's a ton of photos up there all my videos are up there uh also please check out three of my social medias facebook twitter and instagram the link to all three of those will be in the description down below please comment any saint or topic suggestions that you might have and i would love to hear from you all. Thank you all so much uh, for watching. This was Keaton of Good Catholic, uh, and I will see y'all next week. Um, hi, Brielle.